Hello, welcome to today's edition of City News Daily on City TV. My name is Zoe Abubeid. In this edition, the immediate past board chair of SNED, Professor Joshua Alabi, justifies the $66 million used to computerize SNED's operations. We'll bring you the details of what exactly he's been saying. Stay with us. Straight into our first story and the immediate past chair of the SNET board, Professor Joshua Alabi, has justified the $66 million software contract meant to computerize SNET's operations. The board and the Economic and Organized Crime Office, IOKO, are currently investigating five officials for their alleged involvement in the acquisition of the operational business suite, OBS software. Professor Alabi tells City News Daily he took over after the contract had been signed, but there were no compelling reasons to have cancelled the contract at the time because it answered all the value for money questions. Let's move to the Ashanti region now where the youth of Inehini have given government a 24-hour ultimatum to remove all equipment belonging to bauxite mining firm Exton Cubic Company from the Tano of Finn Forest Reserve. Some irate youth today besieged the offices of the District Assembly to petition through the DCE. Despite a directive from the District Police Commander ASP Ambrose Abwaje, Barring them from demonstrating, they later reached an agreement with the police to allow them to protest. They were subsequently allowed to march to the district assembly office to present their petition. In the petition, as read by the leader of the delegation, who happens to be the assemblyman for Inehini, Babayaro, the youth gave government an ultimatum of 24 hours. The government said... It gave an entry permit to Exton Cubic Group Limited to prospect bauxite in the Tano of Finn Forest Reserve. The move, however, angered the youth of the area who have threatened not to allow the company to operate. Meanwhile, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, says though Exton Cubic Group Limited applied for a permit to undertake prospecting of bauxite in the area, it failed to comply with EPA regulations rendering their activity illegal. From the Ashanti region, let's move to the Upper West region where at least some 500 police officers have been transferred in the last two years, a situation which has led to a deterioration of security in the region. The Deputy Upper West Regional Minister, Isaku Amidu Chinia, who disclosed this to journalists after a review meeting with departmental heads said the development is a very worrying situation to the general security of the area. City News Daily Checks in Wa, the regional capital, revealed that most snap checkpoints, which hitherto were mounted to combat crime, no longer exist, a situation many residents bemoan. Apart from this, most districts currently have less than 20 police officers, with the Wa East being the worst affected, with only 12 police manning the entire district. Mr. Amidu Chinia said they will petition the Inspector General of Police to intervene. Now, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, is fighting against government's proposal to lift the ban on the usage of mobile phones by senior high school students. A deputy minister of education, Yao Osei Educhum, has argued for the ban to be lifted to allow students in schools without ICT facilities to use their phones instead. But the teachers argue the move may negatively affect academic work and the concentration of students in class. And that is how we wrap up today's edition of City News Daily on City TV. My name is Zoe Abubedu. Do make a date with us same time tomorrow.
as we bring you stories making the headlines. Thanks for watching.